and welcome to another episode of Dos and a Half Cinco's. This is episode number 105. In this week's episode, we cover the Kingsman. But before we get into it, as always, I'm your host, David. I'm Stuart. And I'm Ben. So Ben had a request and he wanted us to talk about 2021 for some shut reason. Shut up about it. Yeah. It so Ben. <laughs> so Ben, let's talk about what is on everybody's mind, only just yours. Uh, your favorite movies from 2021. Okay, great. All right, Stu, what about you? <laughs> I think I can guess what Ben's favorite. I actually kind of want to do. I I, I want to see it. Stu. Guess what his top three? Movies I think I can guess year. two of the three. Mugen Train, <laughs> Clifford the Big Mugen Red Dog, Train and Mugen Train. <laughs> Clifford's too big. He took off all three spots. <laughs> Uh, Stu, do you have an actual guess or was that? I have was that it? my two guesses of what Ben's gonna say are Dune and Shang Chi. Damn, you are wrong. What? Okay, Ben, what were the three? My top three <laughs> movies. You just changed your mind. <laughs> <laughs> that pause was way too long. Hold on, my top three movies. What Hold can on. one say? Did you just open a fortune cookie to see what the other movie you should pick is? He's going through his notes. Uh, <laughs> can we find another good movie in here? Uh, um, number Ben's three. Lucky Pants. Boba Gump Shrimp. You're just reading the episode titles. <laughs> That's why, I don't know. What's your favorite ep- uh, episode, Ben? <laughs> my favorite episode? No, oh, what? <laughs> Street Sharks? Shut mm, up. Has to be. <laughs> Hurry up. What's your favorite movie from last year? The la- the top three movies from last year. Number three is Shang. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shang Chi has to be up there. Uh, I think okay. I'll put that as my number three. Definitely, you know, with all the the choreography, I think it it was really good. I don't know how they're gonna replicate it without the same stunt guy, but uh, I'm still looking forward to it. Looks like they might get Jackie Chan for it. Who knows? Jackie, Jackie, uh, number two, oh, cool. that one has to go to uh, West Side Story. Actually, wow. I'm a sucker for musicals, and damn, that was a really good fucking musical. Like, Stu, we've been friends with Ben for how long? I've, I've never, never known to him to be <laughs> yeah, a fan, a huge fan of musicals. Thing, when... None of the posters on his little TV wall are musicals. What? What? Like, I, excuse, I haven't heard you say anything about Rocky Horror Picture Show. I've yeah. never heard you say anything about Hamilton. Never I've heard never you say anything Hamilton. about. How can you say you like musicals? You haven't seen Hamilton. Because I've been trying to get Stu tickets doesn't like for it, Stu and doesn't I can't get it. All right, it's Is on Disney Plus. Say? You it's fool. on Disney Plus. I'm not going to watch it on Disney Plus and ruin the experience. I want to be a virgin. I want to be a the flower in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> take take not... me. Uh, Fuck, what's his name? <laughs> uh, Lin Manuel uh, Miranda. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lin Manuel. Wait, so wait, Lin, why yeah. did you fight so hard to not watch? Want us to watch uh, In the Heights? That's also written by him. I never fought against that. I, I remember Stu it. was like, you know what? This is like kind of the big movie this this like month or whatever. Everybody keeps talking. About it. Maybe we should do it. Just and I was like. Ah, it sounds like Stu doesn't want to do it. I, I guess if Ben says okay, then that, that'll be two on one. But then, Ben, you're like, no, let's not do that. That's stupid. I don't remember that. I would have watched it. I don't know. But I'll Damn I'll it. go with, I'll side with David. <laughs> excellent. I mean, excellent. David um, supports my position, so I, I'll go with it. Well, I, I did not know that, Ben. But if that is actually true, then that's... I guess we we are really learning and discovering each other. I've seen Book of Mormon four times in theaters. I still have yet to see that, and That's I know like Stu the says only it's one movie. I want to see, and I can't see it. Like I oh, can never oh, see it. Oh. It's yeah, because like, it's always like here, and it's gone by the time you realize it. And it's like, oh, yeah. we've already sold out of everything. Yeah, it's oh sold out. Sorry. You know, oh. Or you have to go to like some weird like regional theater in, in Topanga. I don't know why it's always in Topanga. <laughs> Topanga. Hey, why do you say it like that? Topanga. What is this? Boy Meets World? Jesus. <laughs> Topanga. <laughs> That's why it's unattainable. All right. Uh, ben, what's the number What's the number one movie? Uh, my number one movie is uh, The Mitchells vs. the Machines. Actually. Really? Yeah, I've seen that movie we, we five times it. already. We didn't watch it. Huh? I mean, you didn't watch it. I don't it. think I don't we reviewed it. it. I watched it. Also. Was the yeah, que- it was wait, really, was the really question good. of the top movie that we watched 
on the podcast or just in general? Oh, just in general. For oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Did that change anything for you what? too? What was that movie? Mitchell's uh, what the Mitchell's the Mitchell versus, versus the machines. machines. Oh, that it's the animated Netflix one? animated. That was the animated one, right? Yeah. yeah, it's by the same guys that did uh, Into the Spider Verse, oh. and with this movie, I think they really cemented themselves as the like the heads of Sony Animation. From this point on, I think everything is kind of going through them, and if that's the direction they're going, then I'm really excited because all their projects just happen to be like hey what's like let's take every fucking frame of this movie and make it into something that you can hang up on your wall you know it, it all of it looks really really fucking good and i can't wait for like into the spider verse or sorry across the spider verse part one so what do you think how long do you think it'll take before it's we start uh they can start competing against the monolith that is uh pixar or Disney animation? I don't know. I think it is going to be... Uh, this is going to be like a hot take, but I think if they continue their trajectory and they don't have a lot of interference, I think they're going to seize the animation market. Here's, seize here's my it? hot take. As in, like, never give it back? Like, you know, become, I guess, the marvel of, you know, of animation, hmm. you know? Okay. Um, they just have a lot of flexibility and freedom you know they're not tied down specifically to family friendly movies they can or do that. certain ips right yeah or certain ips you know they've got spider-man under the belt they've got like this family friendly film they pretty much have like the whole world to them they can make whatever the fuck they want as long as it looks stylish as hell why not hmm. uh so that's why i think like they have a lot more flexibility and freedom going forward and like grabbing whatever project they want Rather than Pixar is like, oh, we have to make this, you know, movie about Buzz Lightyear or like yeah, everything Disney happens group. to have gigantic eyes and and it's well, very cuddly. Yeah. From from my perspective, from someone who doesn't watch too many of those movies, I feel I have, I feel I have like Pixar slash, whatever whatever other animation mm. uh, studio there is. What's the other big one? Disney DreamWorks. Animation or what's the other one? Is it DreamWorks? DreamWorks. Yeah or whoever does all these movies yeah i'm just like i am exhausted of those like they churn out a movie like every year not even or that like, it's probably like, twice a year or yeah, three twice or four a year times it's just year. like okay guys settle down like they're going it's like to me it's like they go quality it's almost like they go quantity over quality but yeah. so I, but when you have something like into the spider verse that was just kind of so different and it was really stylized then it, you know i can see that happening yeah so that's why i'm like pretty excited about this like new partnership between phil lord chris miller and sony animation it's like they pretty much have free reign to do what they want and they chose to make everything super duper stylish and it really continues into this movie um and i was actually so impressed with all the different like visualizations and all the different artwork that I actually bought the art book just because I wanted to see what the hell, you know, went into the thought process for making that movie. And like, it, it's really cool just seeing like the, the, the process of creation for like a lot of scenes and like characters and everything. It's like, it's crazy. I, I really, really enjoy all these animated films by Phil Lord and Chris Miller right now. And I'm excited for to see what they do next. I mean, who would have thought, like, you know, starting with some really shitty uh, cartoon on MTV, then going to 21 Jump Street, they'd be here, you know? <laughs> um, what about you, Stu? Uh, what, what were your top three movies from last year? That you saw? Uh, the top three movies for me, 2021, I guess. I'll go with number three. Um, I'll do um, The Last Duel. Okay. Yeah um I'll, number two i'll do dune and then mm -hmm. one i'll do no way home okay uh so you so you're not a millennial stuck behind your screen then that's the reason why you like the last it was a good movie it's fucking <laughs> zoomers don't fucking know they're so used to just fucking whatever there's no Marvel explosions turns out Stu. <laughs> zero explosions how are they're you just expecting? guzzling from the teat of marvel and disney they don't know what good movies are where's the superpowers in this all right um for me number three is pig um that was really surprising to me i thought it was really great i 
it wasn't overbearing as in like it was too long or anything like that. And Nicolas Cage just is a treasure, period. Um, number two, Zack Schneider's Justice League. Um, I was actually really surprised that I, I watched the original Justice League and who would have thought adding... How much footage did he add to that? Like 35, <laughs> okay. Two hours? An hour, three hours of movie. Of- Wasn't it a four-hour movie? Yeah, yeah, it was the four hours of it. Like two hours of extra footage changes the entire thing yeah. and almost kind of like, I don't know, beckons for Zack Schneider to come back and for <laughs> HP, uh, for uh, Warner Brothers to get out of the way and let him do his thing. Because um, I think over this last like couple months or so, Twitter's been kind of... Uh, blowing up on trying to bring the Schneiderverse back, especially with uh, some of the more screen captures of uh, the new Batman movie um, with uh, Robert Pattinson, um, knowing that uh, you know Ben Affleck's time as Batman is pretty much coming to a close. So I think they want to kind of resurrect that. And you know, is multiverse a, is is that a coined phrase for just Marvel stuff, or no. can they say multiverse also? That well, no one's trademarked it yet, so. <laughs> Hmm. okay and then uh number one i actually have the same one that Stu has uh spider-man no way home i feel like uh after an entire year of just hearing hype after hype after hype it it actually somewhat lived up to it i really wish i just hadn't looked at twitter or anything for 12 months but uh there's no way that would have happened anyway but yeah spider-man no way home number one for me too um all right uh, anything else that you guys saw recently that uh, sparked any uh, that you guys wanted to talk about? Movies, TV? Uh, you mean just like general? Just in general. Yeah. Watching stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I finished watching um, a couple things. I finished watching uh, The Witcher Season 2. Oh. And I also finished watching Dexter um, Season What do you think? Over. What do you think of Dexter now that it's uh, it wrapped up? Uh, I liked it. I thought it captured the energy of the early Dexter seasons. I don't say the late ones because I don't remember enough about what happens, and apparently it was pretty silly what happens. So, uh, but I think it captured the the early seasons of Dexter pretty well. Hmm. Um, the only my only gripe is I didn't like the ending. Um, I thought it was kind of dumb, but oof. Uh oh. Something controversial now at this point. No, not controversial. I just didn't like how they ended it. Hmm. But they left room for more, I heard. Could be a season uh, two. No. <laughs> <laughs> you heard That's it. Okay. You heard incorrect. Well then uh, well, I don't really follow that much on Dexter. I just I saw a news uh, article that mentioned it. Or something like that. I was like, oh, I'm sure Stu will probably tell us about it when he lets it when uh, when we talk about it eventually. Um, what about you, Ben? Anything else? I already watched Naked Gun. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> talk about a ten out of ten. I, I feel know. like that's 100%. like a yearly thing for you at this point. It is certified I mean, fresh by Dose and Half Cinco's. A certified perfect perma fresh at this. Fucking point. critics don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I know. Seriously, I mean. It is one of the perfect movies out there. It has everything you could ever want. It does. It has it romance. Does. It has action. <laughs> it has bingo. It has... <laughs> <laughs> and all your favorite physical gags. Okay. I really hope um, that someone makes those kind of movies again. I know. I feel like they have tried, but I feel like a lot of it requires for you to actually have a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. I've I've watched so many videos, uh, not videos, but like uh, a couple of YouTube stuff about uh, like because mostly around the uh, Golden Globes was supposed to be yesterday, but that got canceled. Um, they did not do the in person, so they released everything on Twitter yesterday. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, it reminded me of Ricky Gervais, and uh, he he hosted it for like I think it was four or five times, and in his last one, he just roasted the uh, Hollywood Foreign Press Association for like hire like bringing him on again he goes dude i did this four times i thought i was done i i thought you guys would have gotten tired of me making these really bad jokes and stuff like that and they brought him back for one more and he goes no i promise this is my last time i will not say yes no matter how much money you throw at me stuff like that (laughs) um so but 
I was watching it. I was laughing really hard just at, at like how, you know, some of these are very crass jokes and stuff like that. But I feel like comedy has kind of gone to the point where you, a lot of things you can't say, right? Um, there was a, a kind of a uh, comfort, controversial thing about uh, Dr. MDs versus DOs. Um, that was, uh, by, our, uh, what's his name? The, the guy from Netflix, um, Amin something, 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 uh, Hassan something. I forgot his name. Uh, uh Hassan, Man, uh, Hassan guy, Minaj. Yeah. The guy from, uh, Daily yeah, Show. he, he joked that DOs and MDs are not the same. MDs are like Coca-Cola and DOs are like, uh, RC Cola. And he got flamed super hard on Twitter, on Reddit. Like every yeah, uh, doctor of osteopathic medicine. You can ask Thomas. What, what does that mean? Oste- it's what a, is osteopathic? <laughs> it, it's a different designation. Instead of being an MD, which is medical doctor, you're a doctor of osteopathic medicine. Is that like yeah. making saying like uh like orth orth uh? No, no, no. That's orthopedic. orthopedic. No, yeah, that's orth- bone doctor. There's or, a there's a separate one. Are that's not actual the, doctors or something? No, they're or they're podiatrists doctors. or something. Uh, yeah, that podiatrist. There's a I think it's called deep. DP, Doctor of Podiatry, or something like that. Um, there's a completely separate one, but I guess he made the joke that there was like a, a DO versus MD, and uh, that's not even that funny like, of a joke. But why? So it, how, how are people getting triggered over it? They're so mad because they. He says that essentially M- MD DOs are just people who uh, are just doctors who just happen to do bad on the MCAT. They're good doctors, but you have to you, you just look it up. Um, I, I'm not trying to tell the joke here, but. Yeah, I feel like at this point, when it comes to comedy, a lot of people just don't have that that funny bone in them anymore. That everybody's just looking to get triggered. Um, I forgot who I was listening to who said that uh, something along the lines of, uh, "The problem is everybody's just looking to go to comedy shows just to be able to find the one liner that you make." But you're you're like when you buy a ticket, you're subjecting yourself. You're voluntarily going. Nobody's forcing you to go to these things. So. Um, so yeah, no, I I would love to see somebody try to make another like Naked Gun type movie, right, with like physical gags and can make fun of itself. But I feel like a lot of movies just can't do that nowadays, just because they're so afraid of getting canceled before they even get a release date, right, before they even get a chance. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, I would say that yeah, I don't think people can tolerate. They've they've gotten very sensitive. They couldn't tolerate the types of jokes that are in those types of movies. Yeah. I mean, well, can I you mean, imagine Dave Chappelle Naked trying Gun to... was pretty inoffensive, I feel. You know, I, I feel like a lot of the gags are very just visual gags. Like, oh, hey, O.J. Simpson's about to, like, you know... Oh, okay, aside from the point that it's O.J. Simpson, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, he, he, where he's about to, like, go through the, uh, yeah, he the hit, door of the hurting room. himself and falling. Yeah, he, like, yeah. He, there's, like, a whole he, bunch of setup for him, like, breaking down this door, and he, like, tries to kick it, and, you know, his foot just goes through it, you know? Right. I feel like, you know, it... it but I, I would liken that to more like you know Naked Gun to like the type of movie, same type of movie that's like Airplane to something that's like yeah. Um, you just named some, another even, movie that has that's Leslie Nielsen like, in it. <laughs> like any anything Mel Brooks would yeah like, yeah would just like totally like you know especially like look at something like Blazing Saddles that would never get something like that <laughs> could never get made again. Well, yeah, I mean like what's we can name? enjoy it still in the, the comfort all of our own are, like, home. Almost dead. Right. But yeah, but like oh. movies like that, I kind of kind of lump them all into the same type of movie that I think could never get made again because just because everyone's a sensitive Sally and mm-hmm. can't take it because because then somebody could say, oh, that's like um, that's clowning on people who ha- happen to be like you know handy capable or something like yeah, yeah like there's always some angle somebody's gonna get offended and I feel like kind of like uh, Ben, I think you were talking about the beginning of the last uh, no when we were talking about last duel, right? Unless it's like one of these like triple A franchises that Marvel's cranking out, a lot of big studios don't want to sink a lot of money into these movies because there's a possibility they may flop. They just don't sell. Well, right? yeah, I think it's because it's more that it lumps into the mid uh, the mid budget movie. Like lots mm-hmm. of people just don't want to risk it on something like that. That's why they rely on like if it is a comedy, they have to rely on star power alone. So it has to be like Kevin Rock, Hart, it has to be Kevin Rock, Hart, Kevin Hart, so. Rock, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all they want to sink their money to because it's like it's a safe bet. You don't want to risk something on like a script you think is funny, but like you know, you couldn't hire the right people to deliver the line. But then we get licorice pizza. Why? Uh, because of Paul Thomas Anderson, who's the director. So 
that that's why because that that's a safe bet because it has Bradley Cooper, it has Paul Thomas Anderson, it has two nobodies, but Paul Thomas Anderson <laughs> has a really, really good track record. Let's talk about how uh, how safe of a bet is by uh, moving over to our box office rundown. Mm. Uh, at number one, obviously no surprise, Spider-Man No Way Home uh, sets rec- continues to set records of $668 million total gross with $32 million from this week. Number two is Sing 2 with $11.5 uh, brand new to the top 10 is number three, the 355 with $4.6 million. Number four, The Kingsman, uh, movie of the week this week with 3.2. Number five, American Underdog with 2.3 million. Number six, The Matrix Resurrections, 1.8. Number seven, Ben's number one movie from last year, West Side Story, uh, 1.3 million. And number eight, Ghostbusters Afterlife, 1.1 million. Number nine, Licorice Pizza with $981,000. Number 10, House of Gucci, 616,000. Falling out of the top 10 is a journal for Jordan and Encanto. So, this mid budget movie that you're talking about that they're willing to take a swing at has grossed $8.1 million for Licorice Pizza. Yep. Is that worth it? I think so i mean with two nobodies as the leads like they don't have to pay him anything how much do you think that they're paying bradley cooper to be in this movie well seven million (laughs) (laughs) one million a word nine million dollars uh so let's take a look really quick uh, for movies like this it's not (laughs) uncommon for wait what what how much are they paying Uh, all right but uh Stu, what's your guess for the budget the total budget yeah, the budget of this uh, liquor for liquor's pizza. Uh, I'm gonna. Is it like under ten million? I don't know. Nope. Uh, Ben, twenty million. Okay, over under thirty million. Under. Okay, Ben. Under. Forty million dollar budget. Damn. <laughs> but is it is it thirty eight million dollars to Bradley Cooper? <laughs> Guys, this is really going to be a swing for the fences. We really need some star power. Let's get Bradley Cooper in here. All right, and what does that bring our budget to? $40 million. <laughs> what was our budget before Bradley Cooper? $39.5. They really should have cut out the waitress from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> Actually, I think she came in and made the budget lower. <laughs> she paid it was 45 and then she, she donated. I'm just kidding. Um but yeah, no, I mean, I, is this how, like, I think they're saying that this is one of the biggest flops from last year, right? In terms of how much it grossed versus all that. So, I mean, are we well, talking I'm about sure like, we need- welcome to Raccoon City did worse. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe it made more. Okay. Who knows? But the idea is that essentially you'd, if you are going to do something risky like this, you have to attach yourself to like a big name. Otherwise, mm. no one's going to just do it for no reason. Uh, for for those that aren't on this podcast, clearly, uh, who who is this dude that you're keep? Who's the director for this? Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah. What else has he done? Uh, her, which is with uh, what's his name, Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Scarlett Johansson. She's the what was it? Basically, Joaquin Phoenix falls in love with his phone. Uh, he did the master with Philip Seymour Hoffman. I guess uh, he probably saved a lot of money on those movies since those were less budget. Uh, Stu, actually, you're wrong. Uh, the budget for Rac- Resident Evil: Rac- Welcome to Raccoon City is 25 million, and they wow. grossed 31 million dollars at the box office. Damn. Why? They made their money back. God. Because it's <laughs> it's Resident Evil, Stu. So don't worry, we'll bring you another. We're gonna bring you one more. No, another one. But Damn. this time, multiverse. Okay. Huh? Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City multiverse. This time... I think they'll just, t- just tag multiverse at the end of it. So- Sony Pictures was the uh, uh, the production house, right? So that means that you can add Spider-Man to this. <sighs> huh? Spider-Man, Stu. No. Come on. No, David. Fine. All right. Uh, any other thoughts on the box office rundown? Where's Clifford? Not you could have had a chance to put him in the top three. I'm not talking about Clifford. I All did. Right. You guys <laughs> didn't. You guys didn't contribute. <laughs> There's not enough top three to be able to fit all of Clifford in. 
Um, so there's some other things that we uh, kind of need to talk about. Uh, Morbius got pushed back from January to now April 1st. I think yeah. nobody cares. Um, Ozark season four. We just got a release date. Um, are you guys still watching that show? Oh, yeah, it's, it's like the twenty the 21st, right? That is correct. January 21st, 2022. And I watched the first trailer for it. And boy, am I excited. And I think this is the last season, right? They're going to wrap this up. I don't know. But it's I'm either four looking or five. forward to it. Yeah, it should be good. Um, and then uh, there is some sad news. Uh, I know that like last week we lost Betty White. This week. Uh, Goddamn Saturday, rule of threes. I know. We lost. What was Crazy the other? Jordan, no. <laughs> Wait, so we had it was Betty White. We lost Bob Saget. Who's the third? Uh, oh, John Madden. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, rest in peace, Bob Saget. Um, yeah, apparently found in his uh in one of his hotel rooms in Orlando, passed out, and that was it. Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh I wish the, I could say I watched a lot of uh Full House, Full House but I never really was into that show. Wasn't he uh, like he did a he did a like a but he did America's Fun of These Home Videos. So. Yeah, that's where I know him best from. I mean, that's I know that I he's best from. known from uh, Full House, but that's where I kind of remember him most fondly is from that. But uh, didn't he have another game? Didn't he have a game show he was on on Nickelodeon? Or am I thinking of somebody else? It might be someone else. No, it might be someone else. It's okay. But uh, apparently, he was like a really good stand-up. Mm -hmm. too and i've never i don't think i've ever seen his stand up i guess uh we're gonna have to probably look up some of that and uh that'll be your homework for this weekend and just kind of see if you can find some of that out but yeah i won't yeah. do it is there extra credit though yeah it is there is extra <laughs> this credit. is the extra credit and, and, oh. and uh ben you really need it you're really behind oh okay well uh can you just adjust my grade i've been trying no, really hard it doesn't work that way <laughs> then how would Stu feel if i adjusted your grade and he's the one who's doing all the a plus work yeah well, I've been doing A plus work too. C I've seen your scribbles that you bring every single week. You call them synopsises, but they're clearly plagiarized. I know you're just copying off off of someone else. Hey, hey that takes effort, you know. <laughs> I didn't like just show up empty handed. <laughs> I have to vet who I'm copying. <laughs> if anything, I'm doing more work. <laughs> Actually, I'm doing your job for you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we lost another legend. Uh, but yeah, no, just uh, I think it would be kind of cool to check him out. But uh, uh, really quick, uh, Cinco or Swimo. Uh, first one is uh, Coca-Cola is now launching a boozy Fresca uh, in partnership with Constellation Brands. Are you guys interested, Cinco or Swimo? Another Wait, what, hard seltzer. Fres like Fresca, the soda brand Fresca? Mm -hmm. Yep, hard sel another hard seltzer. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they're all kind of, to me, they're all, all kind of the same. the same. I don't understand <laughs> all the different, like, oh, you know what? I was just thinking about this the other day because I saw, I saw you drinking one, David. And mm -hmm. it's like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, Topo Chico. I love to, it's like, f where the fuck did this come from? It was like, oh, never. I don't know. I, I All I know is uh, somebody told me that they should really try it. And I bought it like a small case of 12 because uh, apparently like uh so obviously my, like, but my they have friend, like a hard seltzer now too I think. they do everybody has a hard seltzer at this point like, but okay. uh i think the og is what white claw and truly right those are the no the og is ones. zima i think oh, actually i had a zima but when before they uh the kind of end of life that one again they brought it back for like one summer it was actually pretty good i like it kind of reminds me of a smirnoff ice all right we all got we all got hard seltzers now just put them away yeah, like I wonder what the next uh, right, what ben? hard alcohol would you? Well, Capri Sun, right? That's oh, what that, that needs awesome. to happen. I would want a hard uh, Hawaiian punch. Ooh, ooh, nice. mm. hard. Capri you know what I think Capri they should do is a good. cactus cooler. But uh, if you go to Seven Eleven, kind of like uh, Fat Tuesdays, that'd be cactus, great. Cactus. Just uh, put Fat Tuesdays inside of a Seven Eleven. That'd be even better. Just do that. Wait, what kind of what kind of spirit goes good with cactus cooler? It's pineapple, so like vodka, rum, rum, Easy. Coors mm -hmm. Light, probably rum. Coors Light. <laughs> ben, ben, I I, I think you might want to PBR. take a time out here. White <laughs> Claw. Put some, put some PBR in there. <laughs> maybe some Natty Ice. And just add a dash of Bailey's. Just top it off. All or right. Nineteen seventy six Chateau Blanc. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna assume that it's a cinco for both of you guys, right? Like you guys don't care about hard fresca. I mean, there's so this market is so saturated. It's hard to care about <laughs> any of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the next uh, chicken sandwich it's war. Just, and, it's really and gonna seltzer. depend on what flavors they have. That's gonna be the like everyone's gonna have. Okay, it's, it's bubbly. Hot okay, got clush. <laughs> Crab, oh, crab juice. Like I'm, I'm looking at the flavor. <laughs> Those salts are only cockalash. <laughs> oh, oh, I have the cockalash. Or Mountain Dew. <laughs> or the, oh, the crab the juice. juice. Yes. Uh, so I'm looking at the flavors of fresh for the thing you're talking about. There's black mm-hmm. cherry citrus. There's original citrus and peach citrus. None of those like good. grab me. So I'm like, I'm, I don't know. Pass. Okay. Yeah. Um, GameStop is reportedly developing an NFT, uh, oh, trying off. to, <laughs> yeah, trying to uh, capitalize on the uh, the meme in crypto market. Um, yeah, so right after that, uh, GameStop stock actually shot up twenty five percent. So, will you guys be interested in buying a NFT from GameStop? No. What about if they were selling NFTs? No. Oh, okay. Wait, what was the question? So there's it's two questions, right? Would you buy an NFT, a GameStop NFT? That's one, uh-huh. and then the other one would be if they created a marketplace, would you go to GameStop to buy your NFTs? Okay, what, what, what is this? Is this the Cinco Hour? What, what, what is this? I'm asking you because all yeah, Cinco just, all the time. <laughs> Stop buying NFTs, you idiots! <laughs> but it's non fungible. They don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means. I just know. It's what, what's the next question, David? Looking battery, sink or swim? What, 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 what's next? <laughs> well, I don't know. Sometimes I could. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a jolt. Um, <laughs> All right. What's next? Sink or swim? Oh, Hitler did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go into that from our movie of the week this week, but we'll, we'll save that. All right. Uh, game works. Um, unfortunately, game works. yeah. So hold on. So 2021 actually claimed another victim that we weren't, that wasn't as, uh, widely publicized. Uh, game works is closing their doors. No. What? Oh. Are you serious? serious. Wait, wait, wait. The Ontario mills one like game works as a company. I don't know if they're individually. That's the only game works or... I knew of, but <laughs> no, there's one in, uh, there was one in uh, Vegas. Yeah. Like off the strip. I love that one. No, no. Yeah. So that apparently they just Meanwhile, could not turn David profit. Busters just keeps to keep on existing. That was what I was going to say. Will Dave and Busters be next? Or do you think they'll just create this gigantic monopoly that no one can ever beat? No, I think monopoly on what? I'm like a, well, I mean, the only, the, the only the thing other place... is, Dave and Buster's has a self-sustaining economy. So. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps the money <laughs> just <slowly> moving. <laughs> How does any of this work? <laughs> just give me Patty's bucks. Just give it out for free. Just keeping the money, money moving. moving. Oh, so good. Um, so the only other uh franchise i can think of that could be close obviously it's not dave and busters but um when we were growing up chuck e cheese was kind of considered like the kids version of dave and busters right but um as you guys were saying before right dave and busters have a monopoly on this whole kind of thing uh do you think that they're going to be the only ones standing left if uh you know businesses continue to keep closing and they keep limiting the number of people that can no because i I think dave and busters also has a kind of a they're not just like uh video games and food they also have like more adult themed not adult theme but adult oriented <laughs> games you know come pool. to the champagne room at dave and buster yeah. they got they have pool they have like you know, all mm. the darts and all that kind of stuff too so i think that might keep it afloat okay. well what about dave busters versus like round one round one round Ooh, one has that's, bowling that's true round one has karaoke also mm. Maybe those will be the, they'll just they'll be the two they'll left merge. standing. They'll be like you know what I can't survive without. It'd be like the Matrix and Neo, right? It's like the Matrix can't survive without Neo. Neo can't survive without the Matrix, and so they uh they have to merge together and fight everybody else or whoever's left, I guess, at this point. But yeah, um, but yeah, R.I.P. GameWorks. Um, let's see what else is there. Oh no, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, speaking of the Golden Globes, um yesterday they released all that stuff and i wanted to talk about it so 
you guys had picked a couple of weeks back based on the uh, nominees, and I wanted you guys to see how close you guys got. So, best picture, uh, Ben, you picked Belfast, and Stu, you picked Coda because you didn't know any of these movies, so you figured those would win. And the actual best picture was Power of the Dog, which will happen to be our movie of the week this uh, this coming week. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch, was that, that's the, uh, what, Cowboy Doctor Strange? Yep. Yep. Um, and best motion picture for comedy, Stu picked Licorice Pizza with its uh, $40 million budget. And Ben picked West Side Story with its bajillion dollar budget. And West Side Story came out on top. That was a, that was a, that's a comedy? Yeah, it's always comedy. It's, a, it's comedy well. slash musical slash oh, like okay. porn. I think they, they lump a bunch of stuff all together. Um, best actor, uh, Stu, you had picked uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, no. Ben, you picked uh, Benedict Cumberbatch in The Power of the Dog. And Stu, you picked Will Smith, King Richard. And Will Smith was the winner for Yo, Best Actor really? in Drama. Yes. Um, and uh, in the Best Actor in a Musical, uh, Stu picked Peter Dinklage. I don't remember what movie it was in. And Ben picked <laughs> Licorice, the guy in Licorice Pizza. And I can't remember his name either. And the answer is Spider-Man 2. Because it's Andrew Garfield from Tick, Tick, Boom. Wow. Uh, best Actress in a Drama was... Down? Huh? Did you write that line down? No, I did not. Yeah, sure you didn't. Okay, keep going. <laughs> I I will take I will let you know what I took notes on. You'll tell. Um, in a best actress for a drama, uh, ben, Stu, you picked Nicole Kidman in Being the Ricardos. Did you happen to see the movie? Yet it's a series. Yeah, oh, no, I haven't. TV series. It's a movie. it's a movie. I thought it was a series. That's why I, was, I saw it. I was like, uh, I don't want to watch a series. No, it's a movie. It's like I could have sworn I was on Amazon Prime. It's like season or series. It was like oh, okay, whatever. Pretty sure it's not. <laughs> Okay, and Ben picked Kristen Stewart and Spencer, which is the uh, the Princess Diana biopic, and Stu won, wins again. He picked Whoa. Nicole Kidman, being Ricardo's. And Stu actually picked a pretty good number of uh, of winners in here. Um, yeah. b- best actress uh, in a comedy, Stu picked uh, Alana Haim, which we don't know who that is from Liquid <laughs> Pizza, and Ben picked uh, Rachel Zell. Ziegler, Ziegler from uh, West Side Story. Ben, you are correct. It is Woo. Rachel Ziegler. And you guys were both wrong on Best Director. It was not Steven Spielberg. It was James. Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Steven Spielberg <laughs> came in and swooped in with Judah Ben Hur. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Jane Campion of The Power of the Dog. So we have wow, not just, we're not only reviewing the Best Motion Picture, according to the scandalous Hollywood Foreign Press Association. Uh, but also the best director. But yeah, the reason why they shut down the uh, Golden Globes this year was mostly around the, a lot of the scandals for lack of diversity, which is kind of funny that uh, it would have been great to see Will Smith up there if all the scandals. Yes. Yeah, but way to go! You just you just took away uh, bury the lead. You just you just stole a moment away from someone who you think you're defending. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, way to I, go, I idiots. Know. Yeah, exactly. So. They opted to, uh, instead of do the whole three-hour thing, they decided to uh, post everything on Twitter in a timely manner, and they read it to, like, an empty room in in, uh, in Beverly Hills somewhere. So, yeah, way to uh, stick to your guns there, guys. All right, um, any other thoughts before we go ahead and move over to our movie of the week this week? No? No. Okay. Ben, do you have something? No. Am I supposed <laughs> to? Go ahead, Ben. What? Movie of the week this week. Oh, right. <clears throat> so, you fell asleep during history class. Well, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> if you don't know jack shit about World War I, you definitely won't know jack shit about World War I after this movie. <laughs> Everything you thought you knew about World War I is going to get turned over. Because here is the king's man to tell you you're fucking wrong about everything. <laughs> I wait, but Darren told me this is historically accurate. Oh, it's historically accurate, and then so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one I wrote was uh, in reference to something. You tell me if you guys can tell me where the reference is from. Um. <clears throat> Since the Kingsman serves as the origin story seven years in the making since Secret Service, it would be appropriate to start with seven minutes of backstory. 
followed by seven minutes of fast forwarding. But is that classy enough? Enough with the classy, you say? I just feel like after seven years of waiting since the first film, Bravo, by the way, that we should celebrate with a very classy event, a movie to remember. This party, I mean movie, needs to have all the excitement, drama, and intrigue from our time here, and of course, classy. Is it so all here's a funny one. reference? It sounds nope, like that does. No. So here's one. A sword fight scene accompanied by classy cal instruments playing classy cal music. You know, that's good, but that's not classy. You're trying too hard, and that's just not classy. The thing about classy is it's a state of mind. If you say you're if you're say you don't know what classy is, all right, let me let's just try this on for size. I apologize. This is right off the top of my head. A fight scene scored to a classical music track using bladed weapons. Swords. Now that's inspired. That's an inspiring origin story for King and Country. Bravo, good sir. Anybody do you have any idea where that's from? I could have sworn it was always sunny. Yeah, I, I seriously mm -hmm. thought it was Dennis. Ah, dang it. No, it's from The Office when uh, Jim is, uh, he wears the tuxedo. Oh, it's, he's, it's the book of how to have a classy affair, like have a... No, 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 it was the... Uh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, oh. He's wearing the tuxedo because uh, uh, Dwight sent out a memo about uh, work attire, and he shows oh. up in a tuxedo, and it's for uh, Michael's 15-year uh, anniversary. Oh, right. Never mind. Well, good thing we had Ben's in there, because that would have... That, that one bombed all right Woo. uh <laughs> Stu, thoughts on the kingsman king's man um, sorry yeah so i think i've only seen the first kingsman movie I don't... secret service in 2014 yeah and then there was a second one right yeah 2017 with channing tatum or something yeah well kind of or he's kind of in it but yeah um so i never saw that one i only saw the first one i don't remember too much about it but I think as a standalone movie, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was I I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. Um, I think this movie had um, some a lot more um, I want to say heart than uh, it had any business having. I feel I I was going and expecting just like this you know generic. Uh, kingsman style action movie set and that just so happened to be occurring in a certain time period but i actually enjoyed it quite a bit okay uh score uh i give it an eight out of ten. Oh, okay uh what about you ben oh man i'm on the kind of the other side of the spectrum i'm um the big I'm surprise little, i'm just down the middle on this one it's like there were parts of it that i found pretty enjoyable well, that's not know? the other side of the spectrum if you're down the middle oh well you know it's i'm in the, the middle of the spectrum yeah that's the other side the it's the other middle of the, <laughs> the middle that you are at if you chop it up into three <laughs> i'm so, on the other side of the third i i mean like i equally liked it and disliked it you know there were parts where i was like yeah this is this is pretty cool you know all the uh i i really enjoyed all the action sequences particularly you know like if, if there's one thing that uh, Matthew Vaughn can do, it's definitely action sequences. If you're talking about like X Men First Class, The First Kingsman, you know, uh, pretty much any of his other movies, like Kick Ass, holy fuck, like um, like all those fight scenes, all the action sequences, top notch. Um, however, I I do feel like it was it, it was just so bizarre, you know, it was like this very the the uh, part of the movie was very hokey and very like bizarre and out there, you know uh particularly with like rasputin and i don't want to get into it but um like and then you have parts about like an actual whole you know uh a boy wanting to go to war and you know that's very heartful like you were saying Stuart. i i, I actually like that part but it was just like if you take it and compare it against like the rest of the movie it's just like holy fuck this is the same movie you know it just it just seems so different um and I, I don't think it really meshed together that well in the in the end of it so um yeah I, i'm very 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 down the middle on this movie I, I give it a five okay so i'm a little bit closer to where uh ben's at i'm giving this a six and a half um and the reason being is i know that the the order of the movies that how they were created like they were built um or they were made kind of stuck this movie in a pit like it's got stuck because it has to 
create an origin story and then get you to the second, the first movie that was made, right? You need to get to that part where they figure out how the, the Kingsman's Secret Service kind of becomes a thing, right? And so they have to like plug all these holes. And I feel like you're right. There's a lot of heart in this movie, uh, Stu, that uh, I could see there was a lot of like attention to detail was plays. The fight scenes are great. Um, the one I, the, I mentioned in my, uh, you know, failed attempt in a synopsis, um, that one's my, one of my favorites, um, watching that, especially since it was well choreographed pacing's really, really good. And, uh, it definitely, it didn't pull any punches. Like it definitely like landed really, really well, but I feel like the, this movie's kind of a victim of the fact that, Hey, the series has already been established. So I feel like if this was a first movie, I feel like they could have probably did a little bit more with it, knowing that they could build on top of that. But the fact that they've already completed two and three, it's kind of like the first three movies for um, the last three, the second three movies for Star Wars, where you already had, you know, uh, New Hope, um, you know, five, six and seven, uh, what is it? Four, five and six. You have to plug the gaps between one, two and three to be able to get to four, five and six. That makes sense. So I feel like it's kind of a victim of that. So I feel like it, it, it wasn't allowed to kind of spread its wings, so to speak. So that's for me the reason why it, I didn't like it as much as you did. Um, well, fuck wait, did me you say, sideways. Did you say that you're closer to me, David? So yeah. You're actually right in the, in yeah, the middle. Of right in the middle. <laughs> you're very much in the middle. <laughs> so I'm on I'm, the other side. I'm not a mathematician, I'm on, David. I'm, I'm but... playing both sides, so I always have <laughs> I'm really on the playing other side. Of it. Don't tell what side you're playing both sides. <laughs> I'm yeah, not a no, I, I was really conflicted. Six and a half is right in the in between five and eight. Mm-hmm. Oh well, I really like I like there are parts I really liked and there's parts I really didn't like. So, mm-hmm. um, I you know I think like part of it's going to be talked about in the uh, spoiler zone if we jump over there really quick anything else you guys want to say before we move over there no okay no spoiler zone go yeah all right go spoiler zone top so five spoilers of 2022 <laughs> top five spoilers of 2022 <laughs> no for for me the Number reason five. why i liked it um i liked uh the kingsman was the fact that they were not afraid to like turn track like to turn tragic right i feel like a lot of these movies when it comes to like these like team up movies like there's always like this heroic standpoint and that there's like it only like it slightly gets a little bit worse but everybody always triumphs at the end the fact that he lost his son was huge um and yeah i actually was not anticipating that that. part yeah i didn't I, i i was so that like it's really rare when a movie does that where you're like, whoa, I did not see that coming at all. I thought he was just going to explain his way out of it and it was going to be fine, right? And his dad's going to come by and just get, you know, chastise yeah. him for a little bit and then pat him on the back and say, you know, you did a good job and stuff like that. But it's like, it almost wow. seemed like they were setting him up to, like, to, like, to be the, like, the, the successor of, mm-hmm. like, the Kingsman. Yeah. And it's like, oh no, he died. <laughs> yeah. I, I really did like that, that portion of the movie. Um, like, it, it's just so very, disheartening like you know you go into this he's just so enthusiastic about war you know fighting and dying for his country he goes into it and then you know halfway through the battle he's just like holy fuck i was wrong i can't believe i was so fucking wrong and he has like this heroic moment where he's carrying the dude and Mm -hmm. well you know the dude fucking dies in his arms and then like literally up until that point i thought like oh he's gonna make it he's gonna be fine even like he even got up he's like yeah i'm completely fine no worries guys and then the guy he just dies in the most unceremonious way you know and they just... they try to make it sound like he died a hero's like death yeah. right like the the i forgot what the name of the guy is that shows up with the medal and Art, gives Archie it to Reed. his dad or, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, king. Yeah. Yeah. the king yeah yeah and and comes by and uh gives him a medal and says you know your son died a hero's like but he didn't and yet his dad decides to still because he embodies more than just the way he dies right and he embodies like this this idea of fighting for your country and kind of doing you know the man's thing that he carries that with him and then uses that to, to kill the, the bad guy at the very end man that's satisfying mm. but yeah what a gut punch yeah that, that was one of the reasons why i really liked the movies because i i feel like uh, like you said other movies would not probably take this kind of it was very game of thronesy mm. where it's like you're you're building up this character you're kind of getting attached to him and then all of a sudden bam he's dead 
Yeah, uh, I, I I did really enjoy that part. Um, but I also I just didn't really think it fit well with the other parts of the movie because, like what David said, it has to live up to the fact that it's part of this this film series called Kingsman, and part of Kingsman is that they have goofy, over the top action, <laughs> and you know. Rasputin, like, just <laughs> looking <laughs> down on fucking Ralph. And, and, like, and boy, did he deliver. <laughs> that was Holy my shit, I was going crazy part. at that moment. I was like, holy fuck, are you kidding me? Like, He's dancing on the freaking piano. I know. Well, he was dancing on that table, like a ballet. Oh, like, table? I thought... All of his fight moves were that of a ballet dancer. And He's the, Russian. Yeah, and the fact that, you know, Ralph finds, like, yeah, you, you, you got to imagine that the director's like, all right, just, just start moaning really, really loud. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, and this dude's just going to be licking your leg, all right? Yeah. Just, I don't know how that healed. I, that part I still don't get. Like, how did that, that heal his leg? That whole part was the, one of the reasons why I, I docked it a, a point. It's a little cringy, but it's I feel like... It's a little like, weird. Like, I, think, <laughs> I think it fits well with the whole Kingsman movie series because every other moment it's in quirky. the movie... It's not even quirky. It's just like it's so bizarre and stupid. Over the you know? top. But it, it's like it has this, I, which I don't remember from. I mean, the first or any of the other movies, mm. but it has this thing where it's like, is there's magic in this universe or what's going <laughs> on? I think, <laughs> I think they're like kind of leaning into the fact that you know Rasputin was known to be somewhat of a supernatural figure. You know, if anyone in all of history were like, you know, weird and spooky and you know tied to something supernatural it'd be rasputin right? are we talking about the guy in destiny too yes yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you mean yeah, the computer the, it's a computer, computer you piece of shit you dumb you fucking fuck. oh, <laughs> but, he, go... but wait what if that's his consciousness wow. that was captured wow. i have to he go fight under. off a bunch of ads to get to rasputin <laughs> <laughs> again <laughs> again he got himself stuck again dude you're connected in cables just move yourself <laughs> But uh, um, yeah, I mean, like the whole thing with Rasputin was that you know he's he's spooky, he's weird, you know, he's like immortal. And apparently, I don't know all the the details surrounding this, so you know, I, I want to ask Darren about this later. But apparently, from all the pictures <laughs> I read, bring him on a historical <laughs> podcast and be like, let's talk about the Kingsman. So no, I, I want a depiction of Rasputin. How no, this accurate this part. Is. No, this part specifically. Apparently. Rasputin died in a more outrageous way than he did in the movie, so I just want to know what the how the fuck he actually died. Okay, like if it wasn't just like impaled in freezing water, then shot in the head, you know, like how did he actually fucking die? Apparently, he actually that's what it says, right? Gregor uh, shortly Rasputin. after trying to seduce two British men uh, and and removing some type of ailment from a leg. No, um. Died of three gunshot wounds. One of them was a close shot to the forehead. So the forehead part's real. Oh, oh okay. Hmm. Was, was it by the Kingsman, though? Might as well have been. <laughs> I think we're going to have to do a little bit more digging. But, oh, dude, there's actually a picture of it in the Smithsonian. Damn. Yeah, I'll send this over to you guys to take a look. Um, but I think the reason why, uh, like, what we're trying to, to talk about, uh, just essentially explain is, I feel like this movie didn't try to pander to anybody. He goes, you know what? I'm going to make the movie I wanted to watch, and this is what I'm going to do. I don't care what you guys say. Jesus Christ, that think. looks like a drawing from the uh, scary uh, scary stories to tell in the dark movies. <laughs> the first one or the one at the very... Uh, the the one with the bullet movie. hole in his head. Yeah. <clears throat> Apparently, it's been uh, it's this account of Rasputin's murder. Apparently, has been put in a many like multiple films, um, and Destiny, and Destiny. <laughs> um, yeah. I think one of the things for me, another one of the things that I I didn't really like um, was I thought the ending. I was like I was anticipating it, and I was like, oh, it's gonna get kind of cheesy because because honestly, I don't remember the first movie at all. So like I don't remember if there was if this was supposed to be cheesy or or and it sounds like it was supposed to be or like kind of like this goofy kind of action stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't so I was like oh the the uh, the goat's going to get him the yeah. goat's going to help out. Oh man, dude and that was satisfying. I was like this is over. This movie's over. Then, How is there even two more? I felt like the the way he killed the the guy at the end with slicing the uh, thing with the cro with the metal Oh, I felt that it was a little, it fell flat for me because I was like, that guy has no, I mean, no real like association to that metal itself. 
Yeah, not only that, but it's just like that that seems like so much effort. You could just also like how are you gonna slice it with a tiny little metal? Yeah, just fucking let go of the scarf. Just drop them. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if it didn't cut through? It's just like yeah, oh, it's like on. hang on, let me see him sawing for like couple... <laughs> just hold on for a second. Hold on, this, this is good material. <laughs> Actually, I feel like that would have been more appropriate, right? Like if he if Rolf finds holds onto the scarf, he's dangling over the side. He's like and he holds it and he goes, you know, this is you know, it's kind of like reminiscent of. Uh, uh, the Patriot, Mel Gibson as the Patriot, he goes, uh, he says, your, your son weren't better men. He, he says something about, you are not the better man. He goes, you're right. My sons my were son better men. Yeah. And he kills him, right? So yeah. I was thinking like, maybe he would take the, the metal and it doesn't like cut through it first time. He goes, ah, screw it. And just lets go of the, the spark. <laughs> that would have been way more like satisfying. I feel like you have to, have to believe that that metal is really that sharp. Like that's kind of bad. Maybe um, he sharpened it for that very moment. Oh, maybe. <laughs> He's been thinking about it, but we don't see that moment where he's sitting by the grind wheel, right? He's yeah. Pressing it and he's, he's got his sharpening stone out. Yeah. Should have been doing that. Um, so speaking of uh, Rasputin's murder that uh, Ben, you were referring to, there is a famous account uh, by a Yusup. I don't know how to say his name, but it's, he's Russian. But apparently um, Yusup claimed to be invited to Rasputin's place in 1928 uh, as palace to meet his wife, Erna. And they served him a platter of cakes and numerous glasses of wine laced with potassium cyanide. To Yusup's astonishment, Rasputin appeared to be unaffected by the poison. The desperate Yusup borrowed the revolver of the Grand Duke Dmitri, the Tsar's cousin, and shot Rasputin multiple times but was still unable to kill him. According <laughs> to the memoir, this devil who was dying of poison, who had a bullet in his heart, must have been raised from the dead by the power of evil. There were some appalling and monstrous... Uh, there was something appalling and monstrous in this diabolical refusal to die. Um, there was reportedly water in his lungs when his remains were discovered, indicating he had finally died by drowning. Wow, so it's like they took that. And like, how do we make a... <clears throat> how do we dramatize it? Yeah, how do we yeah, make yeah. an action scene out of this? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like, you know, a lot of this movie is like, uh, Matt, you know, Matthew Bond's like, man, I, I finally got to make my uh, World War One fanfic. You know, like <laughs> just kind of plugging all the holes with like just random things about, you know, oh, this is how Rasputin died, and this is how like the what's his name, uh, Ferdinand actually got assassinated, and all this other shit. And let, let me tell you, like the if there's anything I really enjoyed from this movie is that this gave us the greatest uh, post credit stinger in all of sin of all of cinematic <laughs> history, like. Like if you, if you thought the Avengers were great, let, let me tell you about this new. new there was Avengers. a stinger. Oh yeah. Yeah. Move oh, over. Shawarma. I looked up. I sat there and looked up. <laughs> is there a stinger? And it's like, nope. Oh no. Well, I'm going right, to spoil it for you right now. What's the stinger? I'm not going to go watch it again. Lennon is talking with Daniel Bruhl at the end of the movie. So Daniel Bruhl in the movie, he had a very small part, but he assumed power as the new, um, the new shepherd. I guess mm -hmm. the new leader, mm -hmm. figurehead of the shadow organization, right? And so he's talking to Lennon, <clears throat> and he's like, "Oh, you have to meet one of our new recruits, right? Mustachio, oh, yeah, gentleman. this mustachio gentleman." And he's like, "Oh, yes, th th nice to meet you. Uh, what is your name?" Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Cut to yeah. black. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Must that is like crush. literally the best post-credit cinematic stinger I have ever seen. Like. Uh, a, a wow, you a heard literal... it here, everyone. Ben Somali, Adolf Hitler, <laughs> the best thing ever. 2022. The Hitler, uh, 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 the Avenger Hitlers, the, the Hitler <laughs> Avengers. Avenger Hitler. I'm, I'm putting together a team. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I want to stop the, the podcast here. That was perfect, Stu. That was it. We're just going to end it like that. Um, uh, we can't name this another Hitler title because our last episode also. <laughs> <had> a, <laughs> this is this is taking a very sharp turn. This is this is the all Hitler podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Keep uh, style. Um, but real quick before we go, yeah, go ahead. I, because I was I kind of talked about some things that like mostly I didn't like, but one of the other things I I think was my favorite part of the movie was that whole. Um, the whole fight between the that the the son was in oh the no man's land fight? in no man's land yeah that, that was, was so pretty badass sick. that was like one of my that was like one of my favorite scenes yeah. or it was my favorite scene of the movie i like i said i know it reminds love... me of that 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 uh that uh that part in 1917 
right when they're running across. Yeah. Mm. But it was just I like, mean, I was give just you like, the what's... same like sense, right? Like, obviously, it's not shot for shot, but yeah, like for but me, I was, was like so nervous the entire. I just time. thought it was so cool having like the two opposing forces. Like they're like they both agree that like we shouldn't shoot each other because we'll get tore up. Yeah, like but let's just have <laughs> agree to, to <laughs> agree to use our uh, melee weapons. Dude, that was so fucking sick. I love that part of the movie, but. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, ben, uh, Stu's gonna have to watch this when this becomes on demand at this point <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it'd be nice when when all when this one gets released into uh, on demand or DVD or Blu-ray or whatever mm-hmm. uh, to kind of watch them in sequence. DVD. And see. What year is this? All right, in VHS. <laughs> Uh, well, because I mean, everybody's always Beta collecting Max. like vinyls, right? So it's it's better vinyls. What the fuck? higher, <laughs> better fidelity. You I'm have to go back movies on vinyl. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I'm saying people collect vinyl. Why wouldn't people, you know, collect VHS? Just I go back VHS <laughs> because they're pompous. I don't know. Yeah, that's also the same people who drink Topo Chico. I think I might have a VHS player still somewhere. Oh. You know, growing up, the one thing I really wanted was the VHS rewinder that was a race car. You never had that? Oh, I didn't man, have the I one guess... that was a race car. Mine was just a basic bitch black one. Oh. It was just like the standard, like the, the one that you find. I had. Black, I think but... we had one that was like a like a Lamborghini. <laughs> it, was, wow. like it was shaped like it was like in a little, like a car uh, thing and you pop it open and pop the VHS in and then you rewind it. Apparently you can still buy them on... Uh, Oh my god! On eBay for forty bucks, thirty dollars. <laughs> I don't yeah. even think they were that much back then. <laughs> no, <laughs> inflation is 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 hellish. <laughs> really? Mean. Oh, the Lamb. Oh, it's a Ferrari, red Ferrari uh, F forty. It's forty bucks. Lamborghini. It's a turbo winder. It's forty dollars. New and unused. Better start warming up those uh, VHS copies of Lion King. Here we go. How many miles does it have on it? (laughs) (laughs) I rewind my VHS in a race car. Do you? (laughs) (laughs) Dude, that was the flex back in the early 90s, all right? Okay. Oh, you have a separate device to rewind your VHS? Okay, rich boy. Oh, sorry. I didn't know I was talking to the king of England over here. <laughs> what do you call it? A car hold. <laughs> oh, this one's from Japan. Wow, I didn't even know they still made these things. <laughs> or people kept them that long. You know what? The, the, the trends for disco are like this forever. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> all right, all right. We're wrapping this up. All right, thank you guys so much for... Uh, Join us on another episode of Dos Naf Cinco's. Um, please uh, check us out on Twitch. We're available on Do- uh, twitch.tv wow. forward slash Dos Naf Cinco. Sorry. And also available wherever you're getting your podcasts at, which is on SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, Google, and Apple Podcasts. Um, as always, I've been your host, David. I'm Stuart. And I'm wondering what the next movie is. We oh. talked about it. At the very beginning. There's yeah, something of you the have dog. to listen to the entire episode. We're burying it this time. Oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's uh, it's going to be Power of the Dog since that just won uh, Best Picture and Best Director and nothing else is coming out this week. So Boy. join us next week when we cover that. Um, don't forget to uh, tip your Reiki master. Stay safe out there and we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.